pump that you would see in a, in a, in a, a lot of ap applications, uh, particularly uh, in paper mills and chemical chemical applications uh, or chemical plants. Um, again, this is a Gould's 3196, but the most common pump out in the industry. Um, and I'm just going to go over today a little bit about uh, mechanical seal installations, uh, in particular the cartridge seal, and um, and how easy it is to put in. Once you get to the mechanical seal, it's three steps. But as I went over earlier about the components of the pump, we have a couple bearings inside of here. Basically, to solidify the shaft, we got a motor um, turning this thing at 1750 RPM. We typically like to keep the alignment within a couple thousands radial movement, and we only want a couple thousands axial movement. So this shaft has got to be running pretty true uh, to keep the mechanical seal uh, alive and, and get the life you expect to get. So um, here's where the mechanical seal is right here. Uh, installed into the what they call a stuffing box um, and then um, well here is where this goes into a, a what they call a volute where you have a suction piping coming in here with your fluid that is at a low pressure and with the pump rotating with this impeller it increases the pressure and we're coming out of the discharge piping at a higher pressure and then you're pumping you're pumping where you need to need it to be at a certain GPM at a certain pressure um, and what the mechanical seal does is obviously this is filled with fluid uh, and the stuffing box is filled with fluid. We're trying to keep the fluid from coming out of the pump into the atmosphere and then leaking all over the floor, leaking into your bearings, uh, leaking onto your base plate. Um, and again, we're trying to get this down to pretty much zero leakage. So we're going to take apart the pump. Again, we've already taken this out of the pump where the pump is out in the field. Um, you typically leave this, the, uh, the volute in place. Uh, and just disconnect all the uh, the foot bolts here and, and take this whole unit out, bring it into your shop. Um, typically, you would repair if you, at that point. You got the pump out. You put a couple new bearings in. Make sure everything is uh, is running true. So the first thing we do is we take the impeller off. This particular one just spins off. It doesn't spin off. It's quite as easy as I'm doing it. I already kind of pre-loosened it. Um, the other type of an impeller is actually driven by a keyway. Um, this is basically just screwed on and actually uh, it's, it actually as, as it rotates it actually re actually tightens itself so it doesn't spin off. So again, um, so we get the impeller off. There's a couple little nuts that, that hold this uh, back plate uh, attached to the pump. So the next thing we do is take these gland bolts off, this mechanical seal gland bolts. Those right off. Okay, that allows us to take the what they call the back plate out, and this internally here is where the mechanical seal is actually installed. It actually goes into, and this is where you end up putting, would you put your packing. We put that aside. Uh, one thing we want to make sure is this surface, this surface here is in very good shape if we're going to be sealing a gasket against this surface right here. So again, we want to make sure there's no pitting. If there's any, if there's paint on it and we want to take the paint off, we want to get it right down to, down to bare metal and, ma and make sure that's in good shape. Again, we're just trying to squeeze the gasket to keep it from leaking out. So once you're satisfied with that, um, and here's the mechanical seal. And you've got a bunch of, uh, actually you got two things you got. You have such screws here that basically are going to be going right through the sleeve and, and locking it onto this uh, rotating sleeve underneath. And these are the little setting clips here that we're going to be ultimately be taking off. The very last thing we're going to be doing on the installation. So loosen, make sure these all loosen up and off the shaft. These clips, these clips would have been taken off when the pump was running, but uh, we'll, we'll do that uh, our final thing when we take everything apart. Okay, once you get the the set screws off again. That are going right through the seal sleeve and attaching to this, to the rotating sleeve underneath, which rotates the seal. 
There's a part of the seal that actually rotates and some of it is actually stationary. Obviously when we bolt up the gland, this gland here is not going to be rotating. So we'll basically take this off, bring it, bring it into the shop or send it out to your mechanical seal manufacturer and then it can put all new faces and all new internals in here and uh, rebuild the seal when you get it back. It's going to be um, already leak tested and uh, ready to put in the pump. Um, here's your seal. This is a sleeve here. It's a sacrificial sleeve. Some, some pumps have solid shafts on them. Most of the time they, uh, they have a, uh, what they call a sleeve on them. Uh, for packing, uh, which wears sleeves, you want to make sure you, you don't want to have the packing damage your solid shaft. So again, most of these pumps have, have sleeves on them. Um, when you put a mechanical seal on, um, the sleeve has to be brand new. Uh, you can't you can't use an, a used mechanical I mean a used sleeve that was uh, previously um, running with packing on it. So if you don't have a new sleeve on it and you're converting from packing, you put a new sleeve on it. That basically just slides right down. Um, so again, you're going to get your seal back. The clips will, will already be on it. These little these setting clips here I was talking about. And what, that, what these setting clips do, if you notice, there's a gap right here, and that basically, basically presets, there's springs inside of here. We want to make sure the springs aren't over-compressed or under-compressed, so these little clips basically automatically give you the right compression that you need on, on the seal itself. So there's no guesswork on it. When you take these clips off, I'll probably mention it a little bit later, at the, this is the very last thing we're going to be doing on the seal installation. You want to make sure you put these aside and keep them. Um, so if you ever need, need to take the seal off, uh, or a pump actually starts to, you lose a bearing in your pump and the seal has a leak, you can actually take this seal off, put the clips back on and take, take the seal off as one piece and you don't have to repair or rebuild your, your mechanical seal. Most of the time, most of the time people end up doing that, but again, if, you, if you're in an emergency and you haven't got a spare seal, if you have these clips on, you can put them back on and get that gap that you need. So again, now, so now we got a brand new rebuilt seal from Eagle Bergman. Um, so what we end up doing, first thing we do, I didn't have any grease here, but we end up, we put a little bit of uh, silicone grease, a lot of times even soap and water, something to make, something to make this a little slippery, the surface here. There's an internal O-ring in the mechanical seal itself, right here, and that seals, that keeps the liquid from going underneath the uh, basically leaking past the sleeve and the mechanical seal. So again, we got the uh, o-ring here, so we got to make sure it's in good shape, make sure it's in there. Uh, I'm not saying I've, I've never forgot to put it in, but if you do, uh, you got a problem. But uh, So this is actually very important to make sure this o-ring is in good shape and it's installed correctly. I like to lubricate this o-ring also. So once you got everything lubricated, um, you basically take the seal and you want to make sure the, the locking collar and the set screws and everything are, uh, are facing towards the bearing. And you want normally there'd be a gasket on, on this uh, seal, but we've repaired it so off so many times and taken it apart, we've lost the gasket. But I was telling you about the, uh, the, the stuffing box face has to be in really good shape. That's what we're sealing our gasket against. So if that's in good shape. When you get the seal, you have a brand new gasket, and then that actually seals against that, that surface right there. Um, so again, we, so once we get, make sure the gasket's in, in place, it hasn't fallen, apart, fallen out or moved or anything like that. You got your shaft lubricated, take the mechanical seal. Of course, it's not going to go on. There we go. So you pretty much slide that all the way down. Get it out of the way. So that's basically the first part of the seal. Is it really, as you can see, there's no measurement, no nothing fancy about it. And then you take your stuffing box uh, cover plate, essentially, and you got you got a couple. Make sure that these you obviously you put these through the right holes here. And then you rotate your seal so you can put your those studs go through the mechanical seal gland uh, bullet holes. 
Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our impeller on. Um, next, thing, next, thing, next, thing, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put these little bolts on. Little nuts on, I should say. Somehow it seems like it goes a lot, lot smoother when I'm in the, in the field in front of customers and in the rough and tumble uh, environment, but, uh, but you got to make sure this is fixed to where, fixed to the pump. Eventually you get them on. What the hell? What do you have to use for? This should be the easiest part of the whole, whole thing. But Make sure this is seated uh, properly so you tighten these up. Now you put your impeller on, and the impeller on these Goose 3196s again, this is the most common pump out there. Um, there's got to be a way to seal the water coming. Uh, down the down the shaft there, and they just basically what they do is they put a Teflon O-ring on it, and that butts up against the sleeve, and that, that seals the liquid from going under, underneath the sleeve. And you tighten up your your impeller. Next thing you do, you slide your seal all the way up, and that seals that that uh, gasket that we're trying to seal against the stuffing box face, so you don't get any leakage on the OD of that gland and, and leaking out of the pump. Put your gland, bolt, gland bolts on, they call it. So essentially, there's three basic steps. It's three steps. You one put once you put the seal on, there's three steps you got to worry, worry about. Tighten up the gland bolts is step number one. And again, we're crushing that gasket so we get a good seal on the stuff on Mark's face. So you tighten up those pretty good. Next thing we're going to be doing is um, you want to at this point what you want to really do is bring the seal out back out to your pump again um, and put this basically into into the volute. There's a gasket typically that seals seals the volute to this to, to this pump. So once you get the pump out, um, the way pumps work, um, particularly this particular pump, you want to make sure. First of all, the shaft is going to be fixed to where, before you set up, set up set screws, you want to make sure the shaft is going to be where you need it. But before you do that, you need to bring the pump out in the field and do an impeller adjustment. And the impeller, what the impeller adjustment does for you is it basically gives you the best efficiency of the pump. So typically on a Goose pump, there's some jack and bolts back here. You tighten these bolts up, you push the impeller until it hits the casing and it can't turn anymore. And then you back it off a couple couple flaps and get it off the the front of the volute, and that gives you a certain gap here, and the, and that basically gives you the um, most efficient um, GPM that you need to get out of the pump, and, and that's very important to get that fixed. You don't want to you don't want to tighten up any of your set screws or take the clips off until again the pump's in, the impeller is uh, set where where it needs to be set. The shaft is going to be fixed, and so at that point now the shaft. Can't go, it's not going to go back and forth before you tighten up any set screws. So once that's all, all ready to go, so again, I mentioned there's three steps. Uh, tighten up your, your gland bolts, which you've already done. And now, again, I was telling you about the, these, um, these are actually uh, the setting, these are the setting clips, and then there's some, some uh, 
such a way that we actually tighten up the seal to the shaft itself. Which of course, I don't do that to work. You try to get the Usually there's about four to six of these uh, set screws you have, to, you have to tighten. So again, you tighten up, tighten all those up. There's like there's five or six to, to do, but you want to make sure you tighten them up. First, you want to hand tighten them. You don't want to tighten one up because you, you'll pull the, you know, the, um, the locking collar to one side or another. So you hand tighten them up. And then at that point, once you get them all hand tight, then you, then you go go around and make sure they're cranked up pretty good because you're trying to dig the set screw into the rotating sleeve, which which now is going to rotate the rotating part of the seal. So I'm not going to go through all, all six of these, all five of these. So once you touch, so again, the first step, tighten up your gland bolts. Make your then you make your appell adjustment. The second step is to tighten up all the all the set screws that go all the way through your sl sleeve and tighten up right into your um, your rotating sleeve underneath it. And then the last step is you take these clips off. There's like four, usually there's three or four. They come, you have to make sure they come off because if you, if you don't, they're going to break and, you know, it could spark and everything else. So. Again, there's a couple more on this side here, so eventually you take them all off. And that essentially is the last part of the seal installation, um, as far as the seal. Again, keep these keep, keep the clips someplace where you can, if you needed them again, you can use them. But if you notice, there's a certain gap right here. And again, I can take that one off too. Right here. Like, this is actually one of the set screws, so you want to make sure you, you tighten them all up. Again, I'm not going to tighten all, all of them up for the purpose of this here, but. That's actually a there we go. So you make sure you tighten all those up and then anything that looks like a clip, you take them right off. Uh, at that point, there's um, usually some ports here where if you want to introduce clean water to uh, lubricate the seal and keep, this, keep the seal uh, pumping clean fluid instead of a, a solid or something like that, there's a different piping that you have to end up hooking up to it. But as far as the seal installation, uh, that's as simple as that. Um, essentially one, two, three steps that most cartridge seals are all installed pretty much the same way. Um, clips might be a little bit different, but, and that's it. And then when you, when the pump's rotating, that locking collar spins, the rest of the seal internally spins, spins some parts inside the seal, but you notice the gland doesn't move anywhere. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. As opposed to a component suit where you got a bunch of parts internally, you have to be able to measure all kinds of measurements, and most customers are getting away from that and using cartridge mechanical seals.